Thank you for staying with us now. No one who achieves success does so without acknowledging the help of others. The wise and confident acknowledge um, the help with gratitude. That's a quote by Alfred North Whitehead. Now, why do we have a culture where leaders are almost always threatened by their subordinates? Is it possible that that is why we have a lot of abandoned projects, especially in governance, <laughs> because one party does not want to be seen to be incompetent. So let's rather leave the job undone. Um, it was Joseph Sobran who said, politics is the conspiracy of the unproductive, but organized against the productive, but unorganized. Ah, when I saw this quote, I said, yes. So how can we get things done? with this culture of I must be seen to be the one who got the job done? Mm -hmm. That's a question. Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. Right, so Uti, this issue is so huge. I do not even know where we're going to start from. <laughs> Because if you want to, government own is a big issue. Mm. Because yesterday, um, I mean, EC took a story on the president's um, trip, medical trip abroad, yeah, yeah. where the spokesperson of the president was saying that the president can work from anywhere. Mm. Remember the last time where he was really, yeah. really ill that stayed long and yeah, he handed over power, yeah. you know, to his um, second in command. Mm. And that man was just busy doing all the mm. things and closing so many deals. Yeah. It seems, for, for us, the Nigerian citizens, we saw that this man, he felt threatened. Yeah. Like, uh -uh. all of a sudden, Oshiba just name was in the lips of everybody. Yep. So now this one, you know, because there's, there's a law, I think, in the federal government, the constitution, that mm -hmm. um, if, you're leaving, if you're going to be out of office beyond three weeks, mm -hmm. right, you have to yeah. hand over to your yeah. second in command. Mm -hmm. So now what they do is that they will make sure it's two weeks, two weeks 99 plus. cents. <laughs> <laughs> 2.9, you understand? Yeah. It won't get to that three weeks. Yeah. You know, so I'm just wondering, why do you think we always have that? Because it cuts across outside of politics, even in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Like in an office, for instance, because I am the one in charge of this particular thing, teach other people. I might be ill, you know, tomorrow I might not be here and all of that. Mm -hmm. I might be ill and I'm not here. What then happens? The whole... Uh, mm. What's it called? The station will go to a standstill because yeah. somebody refused to. Absolutely. So and it why happens do we all have this? It's so yeah. common. It's so, so common. Um, I, 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 with the politics side, uh, <laughs> it, it's for me again, you know, the, the, the comment you made mm. about, you know, the, the politicians and, and what it is. Um, so I don't want to comment on the politics side because there's so many other factors that will always be at play that we definitely won't be privy to. But um, definitely from um, just a corporate world perspective, it's first a people problem because mm. it's a problem on both sides of the divide. So first of all, everybody has their different insecurities. So if you, for instance, are um, a superior, you know, you're a manager and you're your team lead, um, if you're not somebody who has a strong sense of self, if you're mm. not somebody who's confident in your abilities, when you encounter a subordinate who is very um, effective, who is very competent, it's one of two things. You know, you can either see that person as someone that you can learn from. You can either see that person as somebody that you can leverage to even get make yourself look better. But unfortunately, what happens with a lot of people is that they then be, they feel threatened. So they try to, to stifle the person. They try to shut the person down. Um, and sadly, it's, again, a lack of leadership skills because even leadership is something that you learn. It's not innate. You know, people think, oh, I've been in the job 20 years, so I should be able to lead people. No, if you're going to lead people, it is a deliberate act. It's a deliberate set of skills that you need to learn. You need to understand um, what your management style is. You need to understand who you are as a leader. Um, and a lot of people don't do that. You know, people just get promoted and promoted and promoted. And as they're going along the ranks, they're not actually developing themselves from mm -hmm. a leadership point of view. And when you find yourself in that position without the right leadership skills, then you are threatened when somebody comes across. Mm. Uti, you, like, you, like, you know you like to speak it in English. Don't you think it is also, um, what's it called, as the leader, mm. I think you mentioned it, it is incompetence. Yes. Because definitely, you see, don't try to sugarcoat it. Because if I, I do not know the job, mm. and somebody 
that is my subordinate knows the job and he is doing the job excellently well. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know, so you as you know that you are incompetent, can't you just say, you know what, I am not fit to lead. Let this person take over. But you know the thing about it though is you shouldn't even be threatened because as a leader, and this is why I said you have to understand leadership. As a leader, you just are not people. required to know everything. As a leader, you are required to be able to share your vision. You are required to be able to communicate it and have your people buy into it. You are required to, again, I, I think I've talked about servant leadership in the past. You are required to protect your people. You are required to make sure they have everything they need to do their job. Mm. When you do that, your people believe in you. And they will work to make you look good. So when you have somebody who is a star, what do you do? You project that person. Mm. So I don't know how to do not this. Here. <laughs> hey, so no, I, I know I wouldn't say not here because there are quite a few leaders that I've met. Um, it, it's getting a lot better, but mm. there's and, and I've been lucky to work with leaders like that. People who will say, you know what? I've I've also seen people in in my career here in Nigeria where every meal must come through the boss. Mm. So we do work. We want to send it out. And then she'll say, no, you must send it to me. Or he'll say, you must send it to me. So that I'll, then I'll send it out. It. You know, but you could just say, you know what, send it to me. I'll look at it. It's good. Okay, you push it by yourself. Mm. So you're projecting that person so that, again, people know that this person does good work. It's not threatening to you. What you should be doing is developing yourself as a leader so that when your team performs well or when these subordinates do well, mm. it shines, it casts a very good light on you because you are then seen as developing the next generation, you're building strong people, and you're creating a good succession plan. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, like I said, when you don't understand leadership, <laughs> it becomes, this person is better than me. What if tomorrow, mm. like you said, I go and leave, I go off sick, mm -hmm. and then this person now shines. Mm. But... You know, for the people who understand leadership, when you're going on leave, you're excited because you know what? I've developed a strong successor. This person is there. They don't I can go to sleep. In fact, see, and this person see. will do my job. Well, you know, when I went on that my one week break, I was praying to God. <laughs> because, like, I do not for the life of me understand mm. why you will feel threatened. Ah. Let me tell you something. There can only be one Uwa. Mm. There can only be one Uwa in this world, though. Mm -hmm. So, the truth is... There is no how. You might be great at what you do, but you can never be me. Mm. And, I can, and if we have that clarity and that understanding, you should never feel threatened ah. because you will burn out. So mm. we now have a lot of leaders. You know what I see happening a mm. lot of times? People just, you know what? Let's abandon the work. Let it not. So because I do not want it to be seen that you are the one mm. that did the job. We we'll could leave the work. Nobody does the work so that mm. nobody, you know. And this is what has eaten deep into um, a lot of um, issues that we're having in this mm. country. You know, you want to do a job. Big co companies, for instance, big companies, the CEO must see to everything that is happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How can you now build a company that is you are separated from tomorrow? Yeah. You can never build a company that would outlive you. Yeah. If anything should happen to what today, ways will continue because everybody knows everybody's job. Mm. You can do the work. So that is how it's supposed to be. It's not a situation where it is it's either who is doing it or nobody does it, mm. you know? That is, for me, I think it is, it's, a, it's, a, it's such a terrible, mm. terrible style of leadership. It, well, so it's a style of leadership. So particularly with um, our corporates, uh, some have this sort of style where the CEO is the face of the company, the CEO is essentially the brand, and nothing happens in the company without the CEO. Now, it's not necessarily a bad, like I said, it's a style. So if I take, for instance, Virgin, you can't know of the Virgin brand in whatever industry without knowing Richard, Richard Branson. Branson. He is the face of the brand. But tomorrow, you know that even if Richard Branson isn't here tomorrow, the Virgin brand will continue because there are processes in place, there are policies in place that govern how the business works. What happens here in Nigeria is, um, I won't mention the name of the telco, but you know everything must pass through the CEO. So what happens is you start to create bottlenecks. And things that should take one week or two weeks. Because, I mean, you're incredibly busy as a CEO. Why does everything have to come to your desk? Now, this is two ways. Because it's easy to just say, oh, it's the CEO's fault or it's the leader's fault. Some people also suffer from um, having subordinates who are not competent enough. Mm. So that's the first problem. So sometimes people end up in this really you know, micromanaging state because they found themselves in a position where
they have subordinates who they're not comfortable with the quality of work that they do. And I say that when you find yourself in that position as a leader, you have two jobs to do. You must, first of all, you assess this individual. Are you a good fit for the role? Yes or no? If you're, if you're not a good fit for the role, is there another role that I can put you in that you're a better fit for? If there isn't another role that I can put you in that you're a better fit for, then can I develop you to be better? Hmm. Performance improvement plan, there is a pro there's a process. If it doesn't work, I'm sorry, here's the door. Uti, you're talking like this because you're a productive person. So people No, that... I'm even saying this now from the perspective of the organization. No, that's what... wait now. Hmm. People that are mediocre in, hmm. their, in their style of what they're doing things and all of that, mm -hmm. they actually welcome and accommodate more of these incompetent people. You mm -hmm. know why? Because it makes them feel good about their status. Mm -hmm. Where the issue is, is, it's never been about, oh, the person is not doing so well. Mm -hmm. and all. It is more of when the person seems like every little task that the person is given, almost all the time, mm -hmm. supersedes Oh, the yeah, no, I totally agree with you. I was just even trying to yeah. set the scene in terms of how you eventually end up with some leaders who are overboard in terms of micromanaging. Yes. But, I mean, yeah, there's, I mean, there's definitely a problem there. I'm sure, you know, if, if our viewers wanted to share, send in their <laughs> stories of, you know, nightmare bosses that they've had, I'm sure we'd probably be here reading them for the next one week. Everybody mm. has had that kind of boss, that person who, you know, just, I don't know the work, so I'm just going to be a thorn in everybody's neck. Mm. I'm going to be the person. So you know when you're incompetent, then you rely on fear. Mm. So people are too afraid to challenge Absolutely. you. People are too afraid. And it stifles the work. It kills the work environment. Uh, absolutely. You see, this stifling you talked about, mm. um, I remember a friend of mine sharing a story. When he went for, many years ago, he went for, he finished, you know, serving mm. as um, an NYSE student and all of that. So he was um, going to relieve his, his boss that went on a le on mm. leave rather so that table the boss's table is always piled with people's files you know payments and all mm. of that so by the time he came to the seat he was wondering what is this you know mm -hmm. okay he looked at the forms and everything this person is due to be paid so within the space of one week Uti, that entire off. desk was cleared mm -hmm. and it was like ah, ah so people were now saying, thank you, thank you. Ah, this work, you know, my file has been there for months and all of that. When this man came back... <laughs> you didn't find it funny. Because you because just highlighted my incompetence. <laughs> Not only that, apparently he was using it to be de dealing with those, uh, what's it called, ah. suppliers. So you see that, you see, that's why I say that there are many angles to this conversation. He was using it as almost like, you know what, this is my show of yeah, power. power. Absolutely. You know, so I will Absolutely. clamp you down, you will mm. come, you will beg, you would, you know, come mm. in, you will beg, you will do this, you will do that, then you find something to sort me out. Mm. So when you see that a uh, somebody's desk, for instance, job that you know that send this email or send this thing, you know mm. you can do it now. Why do you have to wait mm. and pile up issues? You understand? At the end of the day, there's something bigger right. yeah something deeper that 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 is wrong big mm. issue that is wrong with you so in this case this man was actually using that his office to um manipulate a lot of those mm. uh, because their invoices i mean i've done the job my my po is with you i just need you to approve so that it's i can get my payments out so he was that is it so now imagine this is just a small office now imagine what happens with our government parastatal, what happens in the civil service. So it, when I saw this topic, I said, God, how can the president, for instance, of the, federal, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is going for a medical job? Why do you even have a vice president in the first place? Why do you have a deputy in your office in the first place? Is it not for the fact that whenever, it, whenever I, am, you know, I am indisposed and I cannot you know, be available, you can step in? How did Barack Obama and Joe Biden work together? Mm. You know, how are leaders working together? So you see that a lot of times, even with, with government, the governors will just appoint a figurehead deputy, deputy governor. governor. They yeah. hardly do any work. Yeah. Because we have accepted this culture that it has to be, everything that has to be done mm. has to be the ogre. So how can we begin to strip that, you know? Uh, so, I mean, for me, again, I think that it still comes down to people. So we, first of all, even need to admit that people need to understand what leadership truly is mm. because that gap is so real and we see it at all cadres people just think that oh once i'm the leader once i'm the boss everybody has to do what i say and that's so not what leadership is about mm. so you find that there's several people who 
have subordinates that they can't even get to buy into what they're doing. I mean, there will always be bad eggs when it comes to subordinates, but the reality of it is that as a leader, you are in charge. Mm. You are, you are essentially driving or the, you know the, steering the ship. So where are you taking your people? Do you know your people's strengths? Do you know your people's weaknesses? But it's it's such a fine balance because there is also the individual. Before you even talk about the leadership skills, hmm. are you a confident person? Ah, uh, it. Let's hold on there. Take a break. <laughs> is the confident me? I believe it's coming from a deep sense of insecurity. Insecurity, absolutely. We shall be right back. We'll <laughs> open the phone lines when we come back. Stay with us.